So after playing a ton of secondary brawling battleships in Dirigible Derby, I wanted to try out the Montana. This is a ship that absolutely crushes broadsides. I think we can all agree on that. Its weakness is mainly that it doesn't have overmatch. But overall tight dispersion and devastating salvos on broadsides, well, most of the time, I guess, <laughs> is why I really enjoy this ship. And you'll notice I'm going against the grain of these blimps. I think that getting a Montana on a flank could be an excellent way to win one of these games. Essentially, everyone wants to follow the path of the blimp. What if you put a Montana on a crossfire opportunity for the entire enemy team? That's the goal here. I'm trying to essentially just kill everything the enemy team is trying to push the blimp with. Unfortunately, we won't be able to spot destroyers, but this Puerto Rico is an excellent example. He's just following the blimp, going flat broadside to me. And that's what we want to kill. I don't know if it's more or less successful than the uh, brawling battleship following the blimp or the brawling battleship taking control of the end game. But there we get our first citadel and bit of damage. This game, of course, is going to be a little sketchy since we're pushing into what would be, I believe, sea cap if we were in normal domination. And there is a Marceau on our flank. So definitely have to worry about torpedoes. And since we're not in a German battleship, we don't get a Hydro. So that's going to be a bit of a problem as we push into all these little islands here. Unfortunately, the internet decided to pick up a little bit but it did manage to come back without crashing, which is a huge, huge, huge improvement for me at least. Unfortunately, we don't get any more damage on this Puerto Rico, and with the blimps moving away from this area, we really do need to start pushing in and getting those broadsides. I would really like to get myself into a position near where the enemy Puerto Rico is actually, using that main island on the enemy's side to take some 1v1s with the enemy ships as they try and cross the middle of the map. But first, I have a Marceau to worry about. Yellowing Destroyers, I think, as you have seen in the past couple videos, have killed me a lot in this game mode, so I might be a little bit over-paranoid about getting killed by a DD just full sending it around some of these small islands. So, swapping to the HE and waiting is what I'm going to do here for now. My team is doing an okay job, you know, really this game hasn't been decided yet, so I feel like it's okay to take a moment and stop here for a second. Not always pushing W is probably the more intelligent way to play a battleship pushing in. I haven't really been doing that recently as you can see, and the results are a little bit mixed. If you just push W the entire time, constantly pushing. five full pens out of Montana HE and we only get 4,500 damage. That's just the French saturation for you. It's really tough to know what would be the right ammo type to pick when shooting at these French destroyers. Sometimes you manage to hit that central hull part that doesn't saturate as much and you get huge damage out of the HE. But this is one of those situations where I wish I had had armor piercing when shooting at the Marceau because Five full pens would have done near six, six and a half thousand damage instead of 4,800. So it's a little bit odd that in taking away full pens from the armor piercing, it's almost just a straight downgrade and nerf massively to battleships. Instead of incentivizing you to swap to your HE intelligently like that, it often just results in even less damage than the over pens would do normally against the destroyers. On to cruisers though, Puerto Rico comes out, and I think that's enough broadside we could get some citadels. Unfortunately, we don't, and I was really, really counting on, well, maybe not killing the Puerto Rico, but doing a ton of damage, because I knew this Marceau, or sorry, the Minotaur was going to come out and try and torpedo me, which he's doing. So we fake like we're just gonna continue in a straight line at full speed, and then when I think he's launched his torps, I slow down and turn in. We're only gonna take four, so we will live. And since this Marceau actually shoots, or the Minotaur, wow, I can't even keep that straight in my head. The Minotaur shot after he smoked. 
He would have been totally safe if he had not shot after smoking up. He would have been dark, and I wouldn't have been able to see him. But he shoots, getting himself spotted, and we take him out for our first kill. Now, this Puerto Rico probably could be getting some citadels or some huge pen damage in through my bow because he has improved pen angles. But he hasn't been, which is pretty lucky for me. And this time, we're close enough to send those shells right through his bow into his citadel. It's important to know that I was messing with the camera there. That's very important. When you are on the first little tick into the binocular view, as zoomed out as you can be while still having the binocular frame around your camera lens, essentially, that is how you get your guns to essentially depress their absolute lowest. So that is how I was able to send those shells so low into the Puerto Rico, even though we were basically right next to one another. That's the only way. Otherwise, if you're fully zoomed in like we are now, the guns actually won't go low enough to make that kind of shot. So unfortunately, it does get a little bit messy when you're scrolling in and out with the uh, mouse wheel. I really do prefer to just use shift. It's much cleaner that way, much easier. But in those situations, it helps a ton to get those guns low enough to get those citadels. And that's three kills. We've cleaned up this flank really, really well. Unfortunately, though, the enemy team does have a much stronger presence near the end of the map. So we need to get out around this island very quickly and start making use of this freed up flank and the crossfires we can get from here. Our Kleber, really helpful this entire game, had taken out the Marceau and now is starting to push out, and he actually baits the Moskva, I think, into backing up to try and kill him. We managed to take him out, that's our fourth kill, and now we've cleared up a path for our Marceau, or our Kleber, to push out. Got Marceau on the brain for some reason here. Now at this point, I think you can see what's happening. Our team is trying to push in and stall the enemy's blimp and keep ours moving, but the enemy team has just done a better job of it. This Wooster is going to go broadside to try and kill the Kleber. And of course, a broadside Wooster at nine kilometers, that's probably gonna die when it comes to Montana. So five kills, no crack in achievement in the dirigible derby game mode, but still five kills, a really, really strong flank that ends in a defeat because we didn't focus on the objective. I'm not sure if it's simply because we flanked too much this game and didn't focus on the objective, or if it really is just a one-off here where this flank would have worked out a little better had I been a little quicker or our team done a little bit more to help the blimp. So the build I've got on the Montana is a pretty standard build outside of trying to sneakily make use of secondaries a little bit. This is more to deal with some of those more difficult to kill brawling battleships since we do actually have a really good fire chance on these secondaries. It's actually 9%. But I'm not going in so far to get manual secondary battery aiming. I'm just trying to get the range up and let the pretty horrible accuracy, let's be honest, the base accuracy, hit some of the large targets at closer ranges just naturally. We're wanting to maximize healing, concealment of course, because well, you want to surprise people when you're on their flank and getting broadside shots. And fire prevention is just so, so, so useful. Montana really is one of the tankiest ships with these builds. Getting a 30 second damage control, incredible healing. And with this upgrade here in slot 6, the accuracy is amazing. So even though you're not traditionally the best brawler, it actually works out quite well, especially if you can get those broadsides. There's really no downside to taking secondary battery modification one here, since in Dirigible Derby, you're probably not going to be getting those cross maps anyway. Personally though, in random battles, I'd probably take Artillery Piloting Room Mod 1, since I love those 32 and a half kilometer snipes you can sometimes get with those island camping cruisers across the entire map. Overall though, Montana is incredibly flexible. You can really build it however you want to, but on a flank, I think this ship is certainly one of the best and scariest ships to deal with. It didn't work out this time, but I'm going to have to try it again because I do think flanking in Dirigible Derby with a Montana is actually a really good strategy. 
Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.